Shall we give the Lord a big hand of praise? Amen. Amen. Let's lift up our two hands and give God thanks tonight for answered prayers. Give God thanks for the grace to wait on him today. Give him thanks for what he has in store for us tonight. Everybody, lift up your two hands and give this great God thanks. We do thank him for keeping you in the faith up till now. Not everyone that began is still on. Give him thanks for it. Give him thanks for the privilege of service, the privilege of serving God and the interest of his kingdom that's opening doors to you. Would you ask him to speak to you tonight, every one of us? Jesus, I want to hear from you. Speak to me tonight. Open a new chapter to my life by your word tonight. Strengthen me for the battle by your word. Strengthen me for the battle. Equip me for victory. Empower me for triumph. License me for breakthrough. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Understanding how to build your faith for a fight. That is building your faith for the battle. Because that's our guarantee for victory. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And it overcomes by faith. There is weak faith. There is strong faith. Weak faith can't overcome anything. And strength won't come on its own. Strength has to be cultivated. Grace to accept responsibility in building my faith against the battles of life to secure victory, triumph, breakthrough all of the time grant it to me tonight come on now let's take grace grace to take responsibility in building our faith against the day of battle so we can secure the victory that belongs to us Lord, I ask for grace to stay committed to building my faith against the days of the battle all through my lifetime. I receive that grace from you. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. The last battle you lost is the last you will ever lose. You are not redeemed to be defeated. You are redeemed to be triumphant. Therefore, you never lose any battle again in your life. Speak to us tonight, Jesus, and take all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Please be seated. It's my year of breaking limits. Understanding how to build your faith for a fight. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 12 is our anchor scripture for the month. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. For from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take their portion by the force of faith. The force of faith is what guarantees the release of our eternal life package in Christ. The force of faith. 
A man can receive nothing except to be given him from above. John 3, 27. But let him demand for it by faith, nothing wavering. Or let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. So it takes faith to assess what belongs to us in redemption. It takes the force of faith to violently take our portion in the kingdom. For instance, by stripes ye were healed, settled already. But the devil said, No, I will not agree. So he launches an attack of sickness on you, and then you fight back. You fight back with the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Now, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, even though he was rich, but for your sake and my sake, he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. Yes, that's the truth. He said to the heaven forever. But to assess it, Satan said, no, 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 not here. Not here. So he gives you gross misinterpretation of the given covenant so as to disconnect you from it. In case you ever get started, he wearies you. Okay, since you started, what has happened? And so at the end of the day, you are just oscillating in one spot. Going forward, backward, and forward. Well, I think all those testimonies are just arranged. I'm convinced because I've been here myself for this long. Just the enemy fighting your heritage of prosperity. The last some people will do is to give their tithes. No. No. Even God knows I'm in need. It doesn't make sense to give to God who has no need when I'm, my, I'm personally in need. I mean, I'm not a dummy. You know I schooled in North America? Praise God. Oh yeah. And it just stands the way of God's people without their knowing. And so they keep going through struggles and struggles. What is seek the kingdom of God first? I have too many things to seek. Kingdom of God first as what? I'm not a pastor. I'm not seeking any kingdom of God. If you want to help me, help me. If you want to help me, don't help me. And then he's charging at God. Satan says, say your mind. Say your mind is your father. If he's your father, tell him exactly how you feel. Look, I can't seek any kingdom of God first. No. For what? You see all my needs? Then I will leave all of them and I'll be seeking your kingdom. For what? Don't you have angels again? I will say, most stones can do our work. So what is my problem? You know, the Bible calls them the, sub, the most subtle of all the animals that the Lord God made. Well, the law is if you are not ready for a fight, you have sold out your birthright. Fight the good fight of faith so you can lay hold on what belongs to you in eternity. You can assess what redemption has offered you. For we are on to you are also called. You are called to engage in a fight. To realize what Christ has purchased for you and me. And we have told everybody he's a good God. He has obtained for you power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, blessing, glory. I mean glory, blessing. So where is it? They are asking you. Because you won't engage in a fight to take delivery. There's a fight to be fought. There's a race to be wrong, we sing. And there are dangers to meet on the way. But you must stand up to it or you go nowhere. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, no one loses ground to the devil among us again. Amen. John 
just like muscles don't develop on their own, you engage according to the demands of muscle development for your muscles to develop. One, you go for the appropriate nutrition and then relevant exercises to develop your muscle. There is no way to wake up in the morning and your muscle is up. No. You build it up. You don't build it to remain down, floppy, and unable to deliver. So we have to build up. There are a number of ways we build up here. Number one, you build up by the word. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give your own inheritance among them that are sanctified. So we have to be built up to take delivery of our inheritance. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. We build up in prayers, building up yourself upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude chapter 1 and verse 20. We build up by engaging in required or relevant exercises, such as exercising ourselves unto godliness, which is the platform for, the, for our faith to deliver. He said, exercise thyself unto godliness for bodily exercise profits little. First Timothy 4, 7 and 8. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. Realizing the promise of the life which now is. So we exercise ourselves to godliness so we can access more of the secrets of God upon which faith thrives. You know that faith comes or grows by hearing and understanding the word. And the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. So we exercise ourselves unto godliness so we can assess the deep things of God which strengthens our faith to take delivery of what belongs to us. Can I hear your amen? So you don't wish and wait for a spiritual build up of your faith. Of your faith. You walk on yourself. You walk on yourself to see your faith develop and see it set for the fight. You won't fight. You can't win. You won't fight. You can't take your possession. This I've given you see on the Amorite and Islam, king of Ishmael. Now, begin to possess what I have given you. As you contend with them in battle, it's your own, but you have to fight it out because of the contention against you are possessing them. You have to fight it out. Many, many believers are just lay by. I, what will happen, will happen. If this is the way I will die, that's okay. What will happen, will happen. What will happen, will happen. There is nothing anybody can do about it. This is already arranged. So if this is how God wants me to live my life, Satan will be clapping for you and his demons. Here we caught him. We caught him. We caught him. So we need to get our system built up. Another way we exercise ourselves is on the prayer altar. Luke 22 and verse 44. And as he prayed, Ben in agony, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was as it were. Great drops of blood falling down to the ground now. So prayer is a spiritual exercise platform. You lose calories playing. You build strength praying. Glory to God. You build strength praying. So the more engaging we are on the altar of prayer, the stronger we become. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need or in the day of battle. So we build reserve energy on the prayer altar. Against the day of battle. 
Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. Now Paul came on the line and said, look, um, hold them faith and a pure conscience. Okay, in First Timothy chapter 1 verse 19, hold them faith and a good conscience, which some have ignored concerning their faith and have made the shipwreck of their lives. So it takes good conscience for faith to deliver. It is what? How do you now get it? Here I need to exercise myself. Acts 24 verse 16. To always have a conscience void of offense towards God and towards man. I exercise myself. I exercise my conscience to just be on. I exercise my conscience to be upright. I exercise my conscience to be there. Where I should be. So you don't watch your conscience drag you around and mess you up. Come here, my friend. Where are you going? No, that's a no-go area. No, a no-go area. No, not here. Not here. And so, your conscience stretches up and keeps you on course. That empowers your faith for delivery. Many are victims of rundown conscience. There is nothing they believe that comes through. I, the Lord, I search the heart and I try the reins. The reins means your conscience. To give to everyone according to my findings out there. So it's what goes on on the inside that determines how God responds to us on the outside. So nobody can build a strong faith without taking responsibility that's the many and then of course they go from strength to strength everyone in zion appeared before god they go from strength to strength from strength to strength the cheapest way to you know to, to bring down a believer is to ignore fellowship is to ignore fellowship as a lifestyle you just walk out on god anytime you feel well i think there is a communion service tonight I'll be there at 7 30. I will leave at five minutes to eight on the spot. Who beg you? Hey, okay, who are you coming for? For yourself or for God? For 51 years of my salvation, I have not been able to count seven times in my life I was away from church. Okay, doing what? But you are too big for God to help. You are too big to need the help of God. So you just walk about. And you fall this way, you fall that way and say, well, I don't think I'm going to church again. I, somebody told me about Obuni the other time. I will try that now. There are people who have been in church before that are now strong members of the court. Strong members. Some are strong members of armed robbery gang. Some are established kidnappers. Chattered. Because they lost every fiber of spiritual strength that can keep them on course. But they go from strength to strength. Everyone in Zion appeared before God. Much more so as we see the day appearing, approaching, you better settle with God and build energy reserves against the day of trouble. You have had something tonight now. You may not discover what you are hearing now the next 20 years on your own. So you can imagine the suffering you suffer between now and 20 years. We have an international church growth conference uh, this coming week. And I was writing my uh, intro note. We are not church growth expert. There is no. No. We are church growth encouragers. By the things we have learned from those ahead of us. And the things we have been privileged to be taught by the Lord. Some of which have worked to some level. Why are we still rushing to learn. We are not experts. The moment you become an expert in spiritual things, you are, you are finished. That's why some revelations will come like this, and it's appear. I don't want to tell you how many revelations have come to visit this earth that came like, like a thunderbolt. And then you look after two years, you can't find it anymore. In most cases, such individuals who are privileged to accept that revelation, 
saw themselves as experts. And the force behind that light just go withdrew. Please know that everything we do is totally to our benefit. You can be in a Covenant University and live in Canaan land and go to hell. Doesn't make a difference. Judas was living with Jesus, not that he was coming there. He had a room. Jesus' room is here. Judas' room is here. Yet it became a stand of perdition. So where you are is irrelevant. When you don't engage. When you do it's, it's not relevant. It's not. So don't wait for your muscles to develop. Grow them. You know that some pastors will go to hell. Jesus says so. We perform great miracles on your streets and get that to my side. You don't walk in the quitting. Which miracle? I can use near us to do what you did. So let's take responsibility. We have every provision to be victorious. We have every provision made for us to be victorious. No one here shall suffer defeat anymore. Amen. The remaining days of your life, you'll be singing songs of victory. To keep our faith growing, we must keep our hope alive. Where our hope stops is where faith stops. Faith cannot deliver what we don't hope for. Faith cannot deliver what we don't hope for. The Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. This is the doctor's verdict. If you allow it to dash your hope, it has paralyzed your faith. Some just saw the storm of the economic downward trend and they began to sink. Whatever dashes your hope has paralyzed your faith. So to keep our faith growing, we must keep our faith alive. I mean, our hope alive. We must keep our hope alive. We have been called on to a lively hope. Hope that stays alive. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4, the Bible says, For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. As long as you are in Christ, you never get to a hopeless state in life. Because a living dog is better than what? A dead lion. So you never go to a point of hopelessness in your adventure in life. Because you are joined to the living God. Abraham, against hope, believed in hope. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. So whatever it was around him did not dash his hope. And we saw Abraham came at last. I mean, Isaac came at last. Your Isaac must come. Amen. Somebody's Isaac is arriving this year. The limit breaking God will break all limits to deliver your own Isaac. Yeah. Why? Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And in verse 19, I'm being not weak in faith. So hope strengthens faith. He considered not his own body, which is now as good as dead when he was about a hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God. Strong faith won't stagger through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God.
and that's you. So we must have to keep our hope alive to keep our faith growing. But hope is also activated by the word. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Romans 15 4. The Bible says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, they were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of scriptures might have hope. Might have hope. So I know because he did this here, he did that there, this one is settled. That's how God will settle your case. So hope comes alive through the word. Just the same way faith is strengthened by the word. But the faith that works must be heart-seated faith. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Heart-seated faith. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. He said the word preached to us was what preached to them, but did not profit them, not be missed with faith in them, inside of them, in their heart, by them that had them. You shall seek for me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart, all your heart. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. So the faith that works. Is the faith that is heart seated is centered in your heart. So it's not a matter of looking good, it's having it here. But God does not look on the outward appearance, God looks into the heart. So He responds to the faith of our heart. God responds to the faith of our heart, not just this words we speak when it's in the heart what you speak is of effect if you will say to this mountain be thou removed because of the sea and shall not doubt in your heart but shall believe that this will say will come to pass you shall have whatsoever you say whatsoever you say number two the faith that works must be love-driven faith. Say with me, love-driven faith. That is the faith that is driven by your love for God. Your love for God is back of the faith you are engaging with. Why? Faith works by love. Daniel was too married to God than to bow to any image or pray to any idol. Now, and God delivered him because he believed in his God, confirming that faith works by law. Songs of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 6, love is as strong as death. So those who dare death because of their heart for God, their faith will deliver any day, any time, anywhere. Our God is able to deliver us. Those three Hebrew boys said, and he will deliver us. And God delivered them out of the fiery furnace. There was no smell of fire on them. There was no sign they went through fire. Because they trusted in their God. So love-driven faith will always deliver Love, if, if your faith is operated on the platform of your love for God, God can turn his back. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, they are the kind of things you'll be experiencing. Because your faith will be walking like fire. May each one's heart for God be renewed today. May each one's heart for God be renewed today. You also have heard that we know, that's what Paul said, that all things work together for good to them that love God. All things. And if you can believe, 
all things are possible to him that believe it. Now, what that means is this. When your faith is rooted in your love for God, all things become possible in your life. Well, the good news is, this year of breaking limits will mark the end of your struggling to go forward. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. But what makes Bible faith unique? Bible faith commits the integrity of God to perform. My covenant will I not break nor alter the things that are gone out of my lips. When you do what he says to do, he can't turn his back. He won't turn his back. He said, what, they believe, what if they believe not? Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 13. Yet he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. If they go from sun to sun, every one of them that appears in Zion, you can't appear in Zion with a true heart and not go from sun to sun. If you truly love God, because I can know, you can know. You have no access to my heart. No one knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man that is in him. Even so, the things of God read no man except by the spirit of God. So, so I can't know what is in your heart. I can only hear what you are saying. But you hear Jesus responding to what you are saying in your heart. What are you saying in your heart? He has access to it. He has access to it. If you have seen my father, I see me, I see my father. He has access to people's heart. So there's something that they are saying outside and knows what they are saying inside. He said, now wait a minute. What are you saying in your heart? Now I can't say that. I'm not permitted to know what's in your heart. I can be praising you when you are doing the wrong. But that's all I can see. But you know you are doing the wrong. You are telling me lies and I'm thanking you. Because I don't know. You know why? If God ever opens the heart of another man to another man, there will be war. Okay, I'm laying my hands on you, praying for you, and you are cursing me. And I now hear that you are cursing me. I will slap you. <laughs> so to keep life going, it keeps us off the heart of any other man. Because the heart of man is deep and definitely wicked. Who can I was laying hands in the old church. Somebody was bringing a knife to come and attack me. And I was laying hands to bless them. But seizing you people saw him uh, from wherever. So they rush and pick him up. He was going to kill me for going out to bless him. They lined up for a little of hands. I mean, a miracle flowing like water. And then somebody was coming and saying, today's the end of this miracle. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> there was a man that was part of a gang, a gang of on how to exterminate my life. And so when he had an accident, because I didn't know. So I had to help to pay money to uh, help him get out of the trouble. Praise God. That is, God was fighting for me. And I was helping out to be sure that the man does not lose the battle. <laughs> Praise God. That's safe for us. It's the safest thing for us. Not to have access to anybody's heart. Amen. They came to kill Jesus. So he said, why are you going about killing me? They said, who oh, is killing you? He said, can't I see what you have under you or something? They just kept quiet. They left that area. No, they saw that he saw them. But I can see you. But God sees us. He sees every of us tell. May he judge you right. And may he judge me right. Every day of our lives. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. We all know that Bible faith has power to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. Well, the good news is there is no irreversible case with Bible-based faith. Come on, say with me, there is no irreversible case. 
with Bible based faith. Jesus said, Where did you lay him? Ah, they said, It's been there four days old. And by this time, he's thinking, He said, But I told you, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Ah. But, Master, I say he's smiling now. You didn't hear English? He's smiling now. There is no irreversible case with Bible based faith tonight. If you came with any negative medical verdict to this service, it will be reverted. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. If they have passed a death sentence on you by medical expertise, that by what they see, your lung, your heart, your kidney will pack up in 11 days. <laughs> and they wrote the paper and gave you. Tonight, you are returning with brand new organs of concern. Yeah. Say so to me, there is no irreversible case with faith. Bible-based faith will always deliver under any condition. Under any condition. Now, see what faith did. It brought Lazarus out after four days. Now, all the organs are gone. All of them gone. Now, so he created new organs. Created new blood. And the man just became a wonder. Everybody was coming, traveling to see him. There was a major attraction, tourist attraction. They were coming from all over to come and see Lazarus, who rose from the dead after four days. After four days. By the audacity of faith. Bible-based faith. Well, the good news is nothing dies around you or in your hand again. Yeah. So shall it be yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lift up your right hand where you are and give God thanks for the word. If anything came true to you, you have all of the provisions available to build your faith for a fight. You have to take a to engage in a fight to lay hold on what belongs to you in eternal life. And it's all clear in scriptures what we must do to see our faith grow, to see our faith build. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. <laughs> Glory to God. You are here in this service tonight and you are not born again. That is a fundamental requirement for faith to work. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world and it overcomes by faith. First John 5, 4. So wherever you are tonight, you want Jesus to forgive your sins and give you eternal life so you can live the overcomer's life. And much more importantly, enjoy eternity with Christ at the end of a most colorful, most triumphant, most enviable life on this earth. I'd like to pray with you so you can experience the reality of new birth that most of us here are enjoying today. So wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. You want to surrender your life to Jesus tonight? Please stand to your feet and God bless you. Stand to your feet. And God bless you. Stand to your feet. Both here at the youth chapel and in, across our various donor fellowship centers. Please stand to your feet. And Jesus will gladly receive you and grant you a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Please stand to your feet. Salvation is not an ideology, it's an experience. You can't be saved and not know. So in case you don't know whether you are saved or not, then you are not. If you are, you will know. So wherever you are, you want to join us now before we pray. Please stand to your feet. And then we we'll pray together in the name of Jesus. Secondly, there are people here that need to rededicate their lives to Christ. They are in Christ as if not in Christ. There is nothing around them that shows that they are still in Christ. They are just in the middle of the road and it's a risk with heavy traffic. No. So wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Christ and begin to experience the reality of new birth in all its totality. 
wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. You want to rededicate your life to Christ tonight? That applies to all of us also in the Zona Center areas. Please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you at the same time. Amen. Now, all of us who are standing both in the first and second call, would you please make your way straight to the altar area? And then at the Zona Centers, please go towards the altar area. The pastors are waiting to receive you. And then we have our prayers together at the same time. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Are you tired of celebrating Jesus? Somebody else is joining us wherever you are. Please stand up and join us. It's your night of change. It's your night of new beginning. Yes, come. Just come. There is still room for anyone who wants to join us right now. As Jesus stretches forth his hand to receive you. Thank you, Lord. Please bow your heads for prayers. All of our friends also at the donor centers, please bow your heads at the same time. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer of faith after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again that I may be set free from the power of sin and Satan tonight. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. I love you, Lord. By your help, I will serve you all the days of my life. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. Amen. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered all through the days of your life. Amen. You will make this journey to the end. Amen. There is no drawing back. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please follow the church officials and fill out your card and drop it. Amen. Amen. You know how ripe the harvest field is. Last Sunday, I remember I had four of the flyers that was here for the announcement that I made. And I said, look, help me send for one of my sons that work with me. Take these four flyers to the gate and bring four people. Praise God. So he went and brought five. The five gave their life to Christ in church. And I saw them with my eyes at the end of the fourth service. That's how ripe the field is. Amen. So I see you also back on Sunday Rescue Raid. You just finish your fourth service, go out that side there, collect somebody, bring him here, go again and collect. You know the way I'm going to do? Uh, just call them. Come, come. God is blessing people here. Nobody is blessing. And they enter into the ark of salvation. And that ends the struggle of the devil over their lives. Praise the Lord. Well, the good news is, many will find salvation through you this year. Stand to your feet. How many 